Welcome, everyone, to People on Dating. I'm your host, Will Moraz. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, this podcast is about the ups and downs of dating and how to navigate through it. Today, my guest is Andrew Peters. And Andrew has a podcast called Anonymous Andrew Podcast. He, he invites guests to share their relationship struggles, how they got out, and where are they today. Andrew, thank you so much for being on uh, People on Dating. How are you, sir? Absolutely. My pleasure, Will. And thank you for having me on. Uh, and... and- as as I, as I was saying to you before we started recording, I was listening to some of your episodes and we, we seem to be on the same path and the same journey. Uh, why we're both at the same age and, and we're looking back at what have we done wrong or what, or, or did we do anything wrong? What's going on in today's modern dating society? It is to me, unbelievable what, what is happening out there and how people are treating each other. And if you just look at even some of the, you you just mentioned the word simp and all these new words and acronyms and things, ghosting and zombieing. And it's, my head is spinning because it wasn't like this 20, 30 years ago. And I know people are going to say you're an old fogey and old fart or something and, you know, get, get with the times. I can't. It's it's. It, it. Anyway, I I should tell you why we're here. Why I'm here today. To tell you a little bit about how I. Yeah, no, no, definitely. That's one of the uh, the thing you started a podcast called Anonymous Andrew Podcast. Uh, what was that journey like for you to start the podcast? Because and then we'll definitely get into the dating uh, uh, and relationships and why people treat each other so horribly. So tell tell me a little bit about your story. Like, uh, okay. what was that journey like to get into the to start the podcast, Anonymous Andrew uh, Podcast? Okay, so I've been a podcast listener for for decade for a decade. Uh, I was in relationship. First of all, I'm an alcoholic in recovery, so I have about nine years sober. And when yeah, I first got see- Thank you. And when I first got sober, of course, I did what they say, you know, don't date, focus on yourself. And I did that for a year. And then I started dating. And by the way, I'm I'm divorced. I have three children, adult children, two grandchildren. So I'm just laying that out there to say that I've been around for a while and I've been dating. Uh, I got divorced in 92. Um, and then I met a second woman and we were civil union for 10 years and I had my third child with her, but that ended in around 2000. And for the last 20 years, I've been dating and, and in and out of relationships. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong or what's going on, but I'll tell you, tell you how the podcast got started. So three years ago, right before COVID, right before they locked this down. I was, I had just left another relationship. By the way, I, I, I discovered that I was a serial dater, that I would jump from one woman to the next. So if one relationship ended, I would, in a month, I was right back on the dating apps and I found the next one without even taking some time out to grieve or taking some time out to reflect, I would just get right back into it. And that's what happened. So I had left a relationship in twenty early 2020 and I'm on eHarmony and I meet this Latina and oh my God, a beautiful, gorgeous. She was a a Miss Universe pageant contestant back in the nineties in her country. I'm not going to mention where it was. Right. Uh, Well, it's Latina. You can kind of, but that's a big area. Down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And we clicked and I had visited her country when I was a teenager. Right. So uh, I was a student exchange. So that kind of connect built a like a little bridge there. She was very curious about that. And she had emigrated here 20 years ago and she got married and she started a business and everything was great for her. She was a successful immigrant who came to the United States and, and did well for herself. And then her husband cheated on her and she left him mm. and she did what I did. She jumped right onto a dating app without even processing what happened for the past. No, it was like two or three months or, or four months since she left her husband. And we, so to catch it up, we, we clicked, we started dating, we got into this relationship and it was intense. She came at me hard and heavy. 
love bombing, trauma bonding. Um, if you don't know what that means, it's just, it, it's all like the I love yous and, and then sitting on the couch telling each other the horror stories of our past trauma bonding. We, we were like how bad she had it when she was growing up and I would exchange things that happened to me. And six months in, we were so head over heels over each other that I literally thought she was my soulmate, my twin flame, which I have to be careful with that word these days. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be launching an investigation into the twin flames universe, but that's another topic for another day. Right. Um, and we couldn't be separated. And the only thing was that there were many, many, many red flags that I did not pay attention to. Uh, she left her husband, but she didn't leave the house. So they had a two family house. So she went from downstairs to the upstairs apartment. And she, I asked her why. And she said, well, because I run a business out of the house and this is where my business is. And she did, but the business was shut down due to COVID. But she said to me, I own half this house, so I'm not leaving. And he's not going to buy me out. I'm not going to buy him out, whatever. So that was that was number the red flag number one. She stayed in the house with the husband. Uh, there was the, then then came, please don't put that we're dating on your Facebook page or social media. Don't tell anybody. I, we we can't be seen together. And it turns out that she got married to a woman to get her citizenship for the United States. All right. Uh, she had tried legally for 20 years to become a citizen. And, and at that time, Trump was in office and she was finding it difficult. So she went to a lawyer. They got, they found the woman that would marry her and she got married to a woman to get her citizenship. So she didn't want me to post pictures because it would violate it would show that she was fraudulently getting married for citizenship. Right. Red flag, right? You know? Um, so those are just some examples. If you listen to my podcast, I go through all of the red flags that went on. Um, I could, She couldn't sleep over. Um, the ex-husband was obsessed with her. He wanted her back. And uh, yada, yada, yada. So let me fast forward. Yeah. So the first year was just beautiful. It was, I, I really found my second better half, whatever. It was a little after the first year that I started noticing things that weren't right. Text, texts weren't being returned, disappearing acts like we would have a, a date for Friday night. I couldn't reach her. Uh, one one day she was over here, over here, and her pocketbook spilled, opened up, and and her wallet fell out, and all these singles came out, like a hundred or two hundred singles came flying out. And I asked her, "What are these singles for?" And she says, "Oh, I just like quickly grabbing them up, you know, like so. I, I like it was a mess. Oh, I like carrying a lot of money on me. It makes me feel like I have money. This this woman was a a business owner." You know, I, it just didn't make sense. So now I'm going to segue into gaslighting. She was a professional gaslighter. Um, the money, as it turned out, came from that she was stripping. She was doing uh, dancing at gentlemen's clubs. Wow. Yeah. Um, that doesn't end there. I found out a little later that she was also escorting. So she was doing... Um, professional VIP escorting. Mm. She belonged to a very elite escort service. And all of this, I I suspected in the second year going into the third year, and I confronted her and I actually did some investigation. I hired a private investigator and I found out some information. And when I came to her with it, she literally gaslit me and told me that I'm crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. You know me. How would I do that? I live home with my husband, ex-husband. How? Where, where would I have time to do escorting, yada, yada? In the meantime, she'd come over here on the weekends, and she would spend the whole day with me, but sleep half the day. She'd come over. We'd have breakfast. We might have sex. And then she would say, hey, babe, can I take a nap? And in the beginning, I didn't think anything of it. People take yeah. naps, right? Yeah. Turns out that... Because she was out all night the night before having sex with men. And I found that out because 
there were many weekends she would come over and um, you, you'll have to put an explicit label on this episode. Uh, when she would get naked and I would look down into her genital area, it was black and blue and, and, and engorged, inflamed. Obviously, she was having either a lot of sex or rough sex with somebody else. And she would say to me, babe, we, we can't have intercourse today, but you know, we could do other things. Just yeah. use your imagination. Yeah. But, but literally she would say, my vagina is off limits today. And I would look at her and say, why? At, at, at first I didn't see the black and blue. She always, one of the first things she did when she came here, she put black curtains around my window. She says, when we have sex, it has to be dark. And I said, why? And she says, because I can't have a climax if it's not dark. You know, and wow. and now just keep in mind that I'm this woman was 55 years old, but she she didn't look a day over 40. Right. And she took very well good care of herself. She was a, a, a Miss Universe contestant back in the day. I'm telling you, 10 out of 10. So I'm I'm looking at this woman thinking I'm never going to get anything like this ever again. And so I just yesed her to death and said, OK. I, I, I got sucked into her vortex of lies and deception and psychological manipulation. And I, and I put up with it. And to make a long story short, after about three years, I finally had the guts to walk away because the, the final weekend she was here, I got the same thing. She came over, we cleaned the house, we had breakfast. We went into the bedroom to, to be intimate. And she said to me, we can't have sex today. You know, I'll take your clothes. And she, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. She no, said, no. <laughs> she said, you, I'll take my clothes off and you can masturbate to me. And at that point, I said, no, I'm done. I'm done. Because this is about the 20th time she has offered that. And I turned the lights on and I, 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 I will, I, I, I kid you not, the vagina was engorged like the size of a lemon or, or an orange i've wow. never seen anything like it in my life this woman must have been out doing gang bangs or I, I i can't even explain it and and i and i i literally said to her please put your clothes on and get the f out of my house and when she walked out crying and and i said goodbye to her we had a couple of brief emails and text exchanges throughout the week, but I, I ultimately had to block her and she started stalking me um, on social media. Uh, I think she was very concerned that I might out her. Uh, remember the marriage, she was yeah. illegally married. She was yeah. prostituting. And so I had all this stuff on her and she, knew that I knew, but kept gaslighting me. So I kept going along with that. I'm even to the point that she had me go see a psychiatrist thinking that I, and I was, I was thinking that maybe I'm really crazy that none of this is really happening. And they put me on some psychological medication called Seroquel. Yeah. And I was on that for about three months. And until I, until one day I just woke up, I said, this is insane because I kept, it kept happening, whatever. So when the relationship ended, that was in October of 2022. And I was, well, I was a shell of a man. I was broken. I said, how could I have let this happen to me? Um, why did I stay? And I started to think about, so the topic of our episode today is why, why people do things. You know, why did she pull me into her world after leaving the husband? Why would she need to have a boyfriend? She's married to a woman. She's selling her body, literally. Yeah. What? Where, why pull me into this mess, in this this whirlwind of a mess that she's in, and, 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 and get emotionally involved with me? I loved her deeply. Like, no, like, I've never loved anybody else. And you and I were talking about money before we were recorded. Yeah. I can't tell you the amount of money I put into this relationship. I, she got flowers every weekend. 
Uh, ultimately, after the first year or two, she's she she backed off the Facebook thing, and and that at first we couldn't even be seen in public together. We would have to go thirty miles to go on a date, you know. Yeah. Um, she used to take frequent trips to Florida without me. She would say, "Hey, babe, I'm going down to Florida to visit my sister or my cousin, or always some story." And uh, finally, I finally said to her, "Look, you and I are going to Florida." And I booked a trip to Miami and we went down there and we had a seven day vacation planned. I booked an Airbnb and the third day I woke up to go to an AA meeting at 6 a.m. And she was still in bed. I came back from the meeting at about 7.30. The Airbnb was vacant. She had left and she took everything. She took her clothes, the toiletries. She packed up and left. No note, nothing, just gone. And after about two or three hours of trying to reach her on the phone, I finally got her to answer. And she told me she was on an Amtrak train back to New York. And I said, what? can you tell me why you left me in Florida? I didn't like the way you drove on I-95. We went to the Keys the day before, the Florida Keys. Right. And she said, you were driving too fast. And I think you put my life in danger. Again, gaslighting. Yeah, yeah. I found out later that she had a client up in Tampa. And so she was, and she was doing dancing up in Tampa. So she used me to get to Florida, yeah. spent a couple of days with me and then left me there. Five days later, after I got home, she, she literally came down to my house, knocked on my door, came in and apologized and begged me to take her back. And I did. Yeah. And I don't know to this day, I'll never know, understand why, because it just continued. It went on and on and on. So why do people do this to each other? You know, well, you have an episode um, number 24. It's why women cheat. You have a woman named Susan Shapiro Barish on. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I listened to that episode I, because it caught my eye. And, and because this lady that I was with cheated on me. Not just, not for emotional reasons. I mean, to this day, I'll never really understand what happened, why. I mean, I, I could come up with assumptions of what, why she prostituted herself. I think she felt she was an older woman. Her husband cheated on her, yeah. that she that she felt no longer desired and beautiful. So by having being on a stage and taking your clothes off and men throwing money at you or charging men a thousand dollars to spend the evening with her or being flown around the country as an escort, that, that gave her a lot of, it built up her ego, you know? So I, I kind of know why she did that, but why did she have to drag me into it? If that's what you want to do with your life, do it. But don't court me, courtship me, and, and get into a relationship with me and lie to me and then go out and fuck other men for money and come back to me, you know? So that's my story. I started the podcast because I needed to understand why I stayed and put up with this yeah. and why people do this to each other. And I am now in my second season, and my podcast is all about my journey of what I did wrong, I take full responsibility in that relationship. I allowed this to happen to me. And now, for the first time in almost 30 years, I've stayed single for 15 or 16 months. This is the longest time I've been single in my adult life. Yeah. Other than maybe my first year of sobriety, I was single. Uh, and I have reflected, I have healed, I have grieved, I have done all the things you're supposed to do I did not jump into a, a relationship right away anymore, and I'm I'm a I'm a bat I'm a it's proud to say I'm a bachelor today. Am I lonely? Yes, I would love to have a woman, but I need to approach it differently today, and I need to choose wisely. I have been making poor choices, so part of my podcast is called Anonymous Andrew: Life and the Choices We Make. Because when you choose a partner to be your romantic partner your your soulmate pay attention to those red flags 
And, and I want to get into that. Yeah. Um, what you ignore in the beginning is what's going to end the relationship later on. Life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, that's a great story. And, you know, and I definitely, you know, took some notes, no call, no show, gaslighting. Then you said she's stripping and escorting. Uh, she only wanted sex in the dark. And I think, Andrew, we, uh, as for me as well, we ignore the red flags early on. And, uh, and the same thing like you, I thought, no, this is as good as it's going to get for me. And some of the relationships I got, and then I'm like, why am I going all out when it's not being reciprocated back? Um, and then it, it, it was a hard choice to make for me, you know, a few years ago. Uh, and, you know, definitely, uh, we'll definitely talk about that another time. But I think the main thing for, for guys, whether you're 20, 40, or 60 like us, don't ignore those red flags. No. Most, some women, I'm not going to say most, but some women give their red flags early on. You just have a conversation. You just sit back and listen. Maybe ask a couple of questions here and there, and some answer will be revealed, and now it's up to you to whether, like you said, pick and choose wisely. And and, I, and I've and i seen it. I, I've seen even now in some of my um, friends that they date, they're not good together, but they keep on going back to each other. And then they call each other names. And then they, you know, it, it's it's amazing that even whether you're 20 or 60, a toxic relationship is a damn toxic relationship. If you want to uh, talk more about that. Uh, well, I, I just wanted to mention that the ex-husband still living in the house. I still, to this day, I believe that they did get back together. Um, and I think that she had been, this may contradict my theory about why she was escorting. Sure. I think I think the husband knew uh, allowed her to escort because her business had got shut. I, I don't want to say what business she was in, but sure. her business got shut down and she was making good money. And by the way, she did bring over uh, when she came down here, she decorated my I, I, I rent the first floor of a house yeah. and you, you would think it's a man cave and it's kind of manly but she yeah. came in here and besides putting the black drapes in my bedroom she decorated the whole apartment she bought the kitchen things she was a great cook uh so i i don't want to portray her as like she took me for the money she put a lot of money into the relationship as well uh but yeah. she bought me many things she she uh was generous to me but that's the part i don't understand is why pretend or, or go through the motions if you're if you're really not going to take this. It got to the point where I actually asked her to marry me. Well, I got down on my knees in uh, Pennsylvania. I took her out to see my sister in Pennsylvania who has a, a beautiful farm. And there's a place called the Grand Canyon. It's not the Grand Canyon in, in, in out west, yeah. but it's, a, it's the East Coast Grand Canyon. And I got on my knees in front of 50 people. And I asked her to marry me and I gave her a ring. Three months later is when we broke up. And so, uh, anyway, we were, I'm sorry. I think I got No, 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 no. It, it's, it's like I said, your story is fascinating. And there's a lot of guys out there that have the similar, a similar story where, you know, they pour their heart in, they pour their money in, and then it's not reciprocated. And that's the uh, uh, toughest part for a man is to let go. You know, uh -huh. I, I've been through there and it's, and it's hard to let go. And cause you always think, well, for me, uh, no, this is as good as it's going to get. But then there's yep. always someone there. We Sometimes uh, for some men, we don't think uh, there's an abundance uh, of women out there that are looking for, uh, for for men just as well. You know, we think this is it. This, I can't get any better. You know, you've gone through it. I've gone through it. Uh, but I think, you know, when you have women gaslighting you or, you know, they make excuses. And, and, and I'm not going to lie. When that's happened to me years ago when I was in my 40s and early 50s, I'm like, what the hell? But then, you know what? I didn't set standards, Andrew. I didn't set boundaries. There you go. Boundaries. I, yeah. I let that shit get crossed back and forth that she probably thought, well, this guy ain't shit. So let me, let, let me, me tell you. Keep on doing it. Yeah, go ahead, please. Let me tell you a real quick story. One yeah. of her trips to Florida, she told me she was visiting an old friend of the family or her mother's cousin or something, that longtime friend of the family. And when she was down there, she said, I had tickets booked before COVID. This is, they lifted the COVID, the flights. Mm -hmm. And she said, look, I have a ticket. I, I got to go down for a couple of days. I want to visit. And I, I said, let me buy a ticket. I'll come with you. And she said, no. 
anyway, so she goes down to Florida and the second or third day, she starts sending me pictures and of the guy's house she was staying at. And, and he was a Latin man um, about her age, our age. But the pictures that they were taking were like a couple. They were laying, it looked like a couch or maybe on a rug. And they were, they were cuddled together and they were sticking their tongues out at each other. We're making funny faces, you know, like yeah. laughing. And, it, and, and I called her out on it. I said, what are you doing? It looks like you're, this is not a, a friend of the family. It looks like, and now I think it was, you know, a, a, a client of hers. When I said to her, if, if this is the way you're going to act, and this was early in the relationship, by the way, this was about nine months in. Yeah, I said these pictures are inappropriate, and and I'm not going to accept. I tried to establish a boundary. You know what she said to me? We were facetiming, and she, I saw the expression on her face, like I called her out on it. She said to me, "If you don't like it, there are plenty of men waiting to take your place." Wow. Quote unquote. And I, you talked about boundaries. I tried to establish a boundary by saying this is unacceptable, and she. She took that line in the sand and moved it and said, you don't like it? Tough. And I backed off. I was like, oh, oh okay. You know, so why? Why, do, why? why did I do that? I'm not going to say all oh, men. I'm, I'm, we'll talk about myself. So yeah. I'll tell you, Will, I, I stayed single for, the, for these last, since last October. Um, so what is, we're in December now. So yeah, yeah it's been about 14 months. I finally started dating again. And I, and I, last night I went on a date. Um, and I have to tell you, it was a fantastic date. Um, I tried to start dating in and out through the summer. Um, I wasn't ready. I was really bitter, angry. Um, I still had feelings for her. I don't know why. Um, I thought about, by the way, it was a no contact breakup. There was blocking and no contact. Yeah. Although I think she stalked me. I, I know she stalked me on social media. Um, just to talk about what the modern dating and how people treat each other. Last night, I took a lady out to dinner on the first date. And if you are listening to podcasts and, and other avenues of, of information, the, the procedure for dating on dating apps is like when you meet and you greet, you're supposed to go to a Starbucks or you go to a diner and you have a cup of coffee. You know, the rule is you don't go to dinner on the first date. That's a no, no, you know, it's, I'm, I, and I'm hearing all these. I, I met this woman a couple of weeks ago on one of the dating apps. We talked, she lives nearby me. She's very attractive. And I said to her when we, when, when we decided to meet, I said, look, we ha I have to ask you a question. She knows I have a podcast. And she says, I said, the, the thing is, we're supposed to go to Starbucks, but I don't feel like that. I want to take you to dinner. And she said, I would love for you to take me to dinner. I said, where would you like to go? And she said, do you like sushi? And I said, I love sushi. So I took her to a sushi restaurant halfway between us. Yeah. And I picked up the check and I, I, I walked her to her car and, you know, I I did all the old fashioned stuff that if you told somebody today, today's generation is like, no, you don't do that. Yeah. The woman's supposed to split the bill and the, and you're not supposed to go to the restaurant on the first date. And no. Yeah. It's a definitely, definitely different time now. And we talk with Andrew Peters uh, and today's topic is a good one. Why do people do uh, terrible things to each other in a relationship? And I, and I heard the same thing, Andrew, go uh, take a walk, uh, go to a coffee date, and women don't want coffee dates, they wanna be taken to a five-star restaurant, and then the guys don't wanna pick up the check on the first date, because you know their, their answer or their question is, well, uh, are you seeing other people? Or are you talking to other men? And it, I mean, it's a, a totally different thing now. Uh, when I was, when we were younger, 25, 30 uh, years ago, I, I was talk talking to a, a friend of mine, she's like in her early 20s, and she's one of those old souls that she says she loves flowers. She loves when a man opens the door. You know, she loves that stuff. And she chivalry. Said, yeah. And, you know, she even said that she thinks chivalry is dead. And on, uh, depending on who you talk to, they say feminine, feminism killed it. Or guys are just not uh, uh, on, uh, in tune with being a gentleman. You know, they basically, you know, uh, 
they don't know how to behave in, uh, towards a woman now. It's it's crazy how much the, the dating scene has changed from when I your, was raised. Yeah, go ahead. Your, your last episode that, uh, I don't know when this will air, but the episode you just released, the experiment when you went on the street to ask women what they look for in a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, 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 great experiment. Um, last night on my date, the woman opened up the date as we were waiting for the for the beverages to come. She came right out and said to me, I went on a date last week with a man. And she and I said, how did it go? And she said, horribly. And she told me what happened during the date. And and she said the man talked all about himself. He didn't ask any questions about her. And he was he was a wealthy man and he kept throwing around how much money he has. And she said, I wasn't interested in him. He was handsome, but she said because he was very self-centered and always talked about. So she basically gave me the instruction. She was telling me, gave, gave me a heads up. Don't do that. Yeah. And we'll get along. And you know what? I listened to her and I let her talk and I asked her questions about herself. And at the end of the date, I said to her, I would like to see you again. Would that be possible? And she said, absolutely. So Sometimes you just have to listen to what the woman says. Pay attention. Yeah. Gentlemen, listen to the women. So take my last relationship out of the equation. If you're on the dating scene today and, and you're looking for what, what women are looking for, pay attention to what she's saying and listen and ask questions. I, I think that's the biggest thing that women um, want is ask, you know, talk about them. Ask them. Because I seen that too, Andrew, on other podcasts and other short video forms where um, women say, oh, oh, he talk, kept on talking about himself. He never asked me anything. He could ask me 101 questions. I was ready to answer anything he wanted, but he just kept on talking about himself and his money and his cars and his businesses and all that. I, I love that point where you said, you know what? You, you just sat back, let her talk, ask her a few questions, get the ball rolling. And we had a great time. And, and, uh, and then... There's this in the modern culture thing is that after the first date, you, you're not supposed to call them or text them. And for three days, you got to wait for oh, them to text. God, that's yeah, right. I, I, I know. <laughs> so because so this morning I woke up, I, I, I got a, I got a new Apple watch. And there was I don't know if you heard the Apple watches were banned from being sold because they there was some uh, copyright infringement. And so we oh, were well, talking about that. that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, well, I didn't know it either. And I just bought myself a watch for Christmas. And so first thing this morning, I Googled it. And I saw that it was true that there's a lawsuit going on, but they lifted the ban, a federal judge lifted, yada, yada. Yeah. And I found the article. So I texted her at eight o'clock this morning. And I said, hey, I'm not going to mention her name. Yeah, sure. The Apple Watch story is true. And I want to send you the article. If you send me your email, I'll send you the article. And she responded. And then I said, hey, if you're free later, I'd like to talk to you about when we can get together again. And she said, today's not good, but please call me tomorrow. She goes, I have some things going on today. You know, so this whole protocol about how you're supposed to arrange a second date, I, I took all of that and threw it out the window. And yeah. I said, I'm going to do what I feel like doing and what I think is the right thing to do because I'm taking the cues from the woman. And she had no problem with me contacting her today. And she was very open to me calling her. But she said, today's not a good day. Can you call me tomorrow? And I said, absolutely. And that's how we left it. Yeah, no, sounds good. Well, first of all, Andrew, I could probably talk to you for another five more hours. Well, so, I'm Andrew, going to have you on my podcast. We'll keep talking. Yeah, no, sounds good. I appreciate that. Talk more about your podcast. Tell us the website. Tell us uh, some sure. upcoming episodes. Well, I have I have a website anonymousandrewpodcast.com. Uh, I am based on uh, Apple Podcast. That's where I launch from, but I'm on everywhere. I'm on, on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Google. Just Google yeah, I anonymous that Andrew. In, things like that. Yeah, I think everywhere. I pay. Like you know, I, like you. Uh, I, I'll even. I'm even going to shout out an organization called Podmatch. Um, it's an organization which is like a Tinder for podcasters yeah yeah, yeah. it's a good it's a good uh it's a good one yeah there's another one uh i think it's called uh podcast guests so i'll that's send how, you that, that information that's how we uh that's how we met yeah yeah so that's good um anything else you would like to promote no just come 
it's it's my journey, but along the way, I'm educating myself and the listeners as to what's going on in the culture that's that we find ourselves in post COVID. You know, can you before COVID, uh, I would walk up to a woman in a supermarket and ask her, you know, for a phone number. I think you're attractive, whatever. But now they're still walking around with masks in in the in the fruit department. You know, yeah, so you yeah, can't. You know, you, so I you know, it's things like that we're talking about. I'm going to, I'm going to investigate the twin flames universe controversy. That's, that's a cult. I don't know if you know anything about it, but no, no, no. Talk, uh, tell us, um, talk more real about quickly. that. Well, I'll definitely tune in to listen to that. <laughs> well, real quickly, just Google twin flames universe and, uh, Netflix and Amazon have put out documentaries on it and it's a cult where they, you join the cult. Well, they don't call it a cult. They call it, some organization where you pay six thousand dollars and they promise you that they'll find you your twin flame, and um, it's 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 a it's a cult. Once you join and they got your money, um, they, there's so much disgusting stuff going on. They'll tell you that your twin flame might be a female, so you have to change your gender. So they'll make you have transgender surgery in order to meet your twin flame. You know. There's allegations of stalking. They'll say your twin flame is that gentleman over there. He's not part of the organization, but this this woman got, got a restraining order put against her because she was told that that's her twin flame. So she went after him. He had no idea who she was. You know, it's crazy things like that that's going on in this cult. Yeah. Um, so go look it up on Netflix and Amazon, Escaping the Twin Flames Universe. Yeah, I'll definitely put that on the show notes. And if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, what's the best way? I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, Anonymous Andrew Podcast. Yep, Just I'll like that. Yeah, I'll definitely put it on the show notes. Well, Andrew, first of all, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on People on Danny. I really, really appreciate it. Well, it's, it's my pleasure, and thank you for having me on. Yep. All right. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye. 